seen Dave Savory's fucking new video today? Uh, <laughs> I mean, what? Isn't I? yeah. Well, I didn't yeah. get that far because it. Um, I, my phone kept ringing. Just he's ripped, mugging he's you off. ripped the piss out of me yeah. as well. <laughs> I mean, like, he's been doing it. He's my that, video oh. on his video of me making him. He goes, he thinks he likes fucking ingots. What a twat! <laughs> oh fuck's sake! <laughs> that's what you get, though, Nick. That's what you yeah, get. That's fair. Hello, sorry about this break in the action. Um, it's just a quick reminder that I've got my own podcast, the Fat Sam Podcast. Fat Sam Podcast, look for that logo. It's on Apple, iTunes, well, it's the same thing. Um, Spotify, YouTube, the lot. You'll be able to get it anywhere you get your podcast from. Uh, and it's basically just me talking to other trades who have an interesting story. Or we go deep on subjects that matter to the industry. So... Without further ado, let's get back to the action. Hello and welcome to Monday Club. Yeah, Amy's back in the house this week. Yes. What are you saying, Amy? How is life? Uh, it's all right, thank you. Busy as usual. Good. What about you guys? All good? Yeah, well, I I did work last week. This is uh, oh, wow. shocking news. So, Not you good. know, about six months ago, I'd done some outside lights for a friend of mine, um, driving drive-out lights. Well, they started tripping. Now, what I'd done is I run it all underground, all the joints underground in whisker boxes filled with gel. Um, but the problem is, and this is what's really interesting about this job is, when I did it in the summer, obviously it was bone dry. It was peak summer, bone dry. Um, and I had buried everything to like the minimum requirements, which is like 30, 35, uh, 35 centimetres or 350 mil um, <clears throat> change of... Uh, change of um, soil, like so, sand, tape, the lot, all done nicely. I was so pleased with it. <clears throat> anyway, come forward, fast forward to the winter. Well, it's very clay, like it's very clay where he lives, um, and it's the water runoff is such a problem there that they had to dig French canals in their garden to get rid of the water, the sitting water in their garden at winter time. Well, no one told me this. And obviously, something's tripping. So I've gone back to have a look at it. And uh, what happened is, you dig down to one of the boxes. I thought, I'm going to pull up a box. Well, actually, it's sitting in water. So the water table had risen so much mm. that the boxes were sub completely and utterly submerged in water. And it was like, you know, when you're at the sand, uh, sorry, at the beach, you dig a hole in the sand, you get down to a certain level, you, can, you can't get rid of the water fast enough. Mm. Well, it's the same thing. So I've had to raise them all up. And I had to use my engineering judgment on this. So what I did is I bought some slate, um, and I put a, a slate underneath it and a slate on top of it. So for like protection, if you like, told the client that I've had to raise it all up. It's only about that much under the surface, which is about two, three, two, three inches under the surface. Um, but I've had to protect the top of it from like, I don't know if a gardener puts a shovel in or something like that. It's a thick slate. You're not breaking through it. Everything's protected, but the water table is so high there that it doesn't matter what you do with those boxes, you will get water ingress at some point. That's annoying, um, isn't it? So I had to I had to move the boxes, the junction boxes up. Now, what have I learned from that? The, what I would say is, I would never ever bury a junction box again if I didn't need to. What I would rather do is move it out of sight and just mm. have it on like a stake, elevated out of the ground a little bit. Yeah. Because you're just That's asking for trouble. Do. It's just yeah. nonsense. Like, I had about three faults. Um, I had two on one side and one on the other side. And it just makes you look like a div, really, because I, mm -hmm. you've come up with this solution. It's meant to be IP, um, IP67, isn't it? Uh, whisker boxes. 
meant to be IP67. Um, and then the gels went to add that next layer of protection. And to be fair, it's just an absolute nightmare job. So I spent two, two, three days last week doing that. So that was my week. And to, to top it off, did you get paid for that or did you get it all free? Well, I had my expenses paid. Um, he is my friend. Um, you know, he's not short of a few quids um, and he's, he didn't want to see me out of pocket. Yeah. Um, if it was a client, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on, really. But no. the interesting thing is, how do you listen? You there's, spoil... there's no way you can use any thought process that the tape water table is going to call that high. There's no. just no way. And, and this is the whole thing. It's like the water table has risen to a point where, like, if you follow the regs, the regs become useless because the, the water table is so high. So, what do you do? Um, I mean, if I had to extend it all and raise it all above the ground, then, you know, that would be, I wouldn't do that for free. Yeah, no, I know. That's what we do with the spike. So if I don't, ha if I don't have to bury a joint, to be fair, I don't think I've ever buried a whisker box. I've always tried to do the through gel ones, like the armoured sealed yeah, ones. Torpedo joints. Because they won't get water ingress, no. even if they're submerged in water. Um, but with the whisker ones, if it's, to be fair, if we can get the fitting and the, the cable entry into the, into the fitting, the connection. Yeah. But if it's not, if it's just a spike light, then what we will do is literally two, three inches behind that, we will put the whisker box. So the soil, you could probably just still see the top of the whisker box through the soil. To me, if you put the light in, if it's within, I would say, a five inch radius around the light, you, you, you're safe there. Yeah, I, I, th I think that's sensible. Um, I, you know, I know me, me and Mark, we spoke about that job. I spoke with Neil about that job. And it just wasn't a consideration. You just think, I'm going to do it by the book, exactly mm. by the book, make sure everything's 100% and uh, use the best products because budget wasn't an issue. Um, I just wanted to do it real, a real good job, walk away happy. And it was until it absolutely pissed down last week. Like, yeah. well, the last couple of weeks. Which it might not do that for another couple of years. Do you know what I mean? Oh, man. But everything, I, I raised every single one up just because there's no point raising the ones in the water up because you don't know no. the water, water, water's water, in it? it gets everywhere. So that is my interesting story for last week. I just got a bit excited, mate. That's all, it's a tricky one, isn't it? And like we said, if you can get them inside, was it bollard lights you put up, I think, from memory, wasn't it? Uh, well, no, not really. So what we had to do, we had to construct um, concrete plimps that buried just at surface level. And then put a um, slab down, like a nice, like grey slab. And then we fitted these. They are like bollard lights. They're like I don't know, thirty centimeters tall, IP67 yeah. rated. So you, you, lights. you couldn't get them in anywhere, could you? Then that's no. so you did all you, you did all you could do really. And like you say, you wouldn't expect that. So at least you've sorted it out now there you've gone back like a good contractor you are and, and put it right yeah uh, well it was nice like obviously i haven't worked for a couple of weeks now um and it was nice to be able to like do a bit of work um and it's always nice doing your own work man not working for someone else even though it's frustrating because you're going back fixing a job that you thought you'd never see again um it's still nice to be doing like doing things at your own pace um on your own money it's it's a nice it's a nicer way of being on that as well though you've what i like about that as annoying as it is you've the next time you ever do that you've learned from that job yes and that is. mistake will never be made again like i'm no. trying to instill that in adam every time we go to fix something like what could have been done differently to prevent this for the next time and then you've all of a sudden you've got a list of five things for the next job that is previous done or you fault find it that someone else has done we can go right we won't do that because obviously that was a failure last time yeah so it's always a learning curve it's, it's even down to the things like, um, in the end, I even siliconed every single hole, like, inside the box first. I siliconed it. Then I siliconed the lip, put a bead around the lip of the thing, regelled it, then squashed the lid down into the silicon, and then put a weight on top of it. Like, that, that box, if it gets water in it, will be a miracle. Mm. like i went in because i never want to go back it's embarrassing for one and for two yeah. um you just it's just not it's not professional and that's the, and here at monday club we're all about being professional <laughs> sometimes <laughs> 
bringing me to a new point. No, I'm not going to. Right. Um, Marco, what's new in your world this week? We've been doing loads of EICRs, so it's just pretty getting pretty much boring, routine, turn up, test the house kind of thing because all sorts of other stuff's just stopped. I don't know how you've been finding it, Nick, but that's what's happened uh, with my little business. We've had everything else fall off a cliff edge and um, we're just filling time doing EICRs. So away from the day job, Apprentice One to One's been quite exciting. You might have all seen that people have been donating all sorts of gear in to give away to apprentices. So we've got 10, 10 MFTs now, so 10 multifunction it's testers wicked, all ready to give away. It is. Two have been given out already, and it was Eddie who started that. So Eddie Clemens from Pegasus. He's the one who kind of came up with that idea, and other people have jumped on behind him doing the same. So that's pretty cool. Even just people offering up snips and screwdrivers and stuff, it all counts, and there's um, loads of apprentices who are grateful for it. So that's been a nice thing to be involved with. So um, this, this, and yeah, just, just trying to help... Hold on. Let's just take a moment for this. Like that's pretty amazing. You are yeah. basically a hub for apprentices now where you're getting people helping apprentices in a way that's never been done in the history of the industry ever. Yeah. Like you're an you're a hub for apprentices is so well, it's actually it's it's fantastic. Is whatever superlative you can put to it is amazing. Like what you've done is incredible. It's 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 nuts. You've got ten MFTs to give to apprentices who need who are learning. You've got like you're hooking people up with jobs left, right, and centre. What are you nearly at four hundred apprentices um, being placed now? It's over four hundred now. Um, we was counting up again last week. I think it's over four hundred and fifty, but. I've not been keeping yeah. as good a track of it as I should because we've been a little bit busy with other stuff. But yeah, it's a lot of people. And like you say, it's not just that either. It's the um, employers coming forward who are asking for you know help with, with grants and how they take people on, what their actual requirements are, of how much time you've got to pay them for and stuff. So it's just trying to give that help and guidance. That's annoying though. And that, what you're saying is perfect. But what's annoying is when I tried to find this information out, it's nowhere. There's no definitive no. answer on any pissing website, anyone that you talk to. Like, if I had known you, Mark, when I took Adam on the first time, you would have given me all the answers. Even speaking to his lecturers and all this sort of stuff, it was just like, oh, we might get this. You might. I don't want might. What's going to happen? What do I need to do? What box do I need to tick? What paperwork do I need? What PP? I wanted all this sort of stuff, and no one could give me a proper answer. I think, it was I think yeah, you're dead right. I think Apprentice One to One. Um, is an incredible thing. And I think like without blowing smoke up your ass, but with blowing smoke up your ass, I think mm. your um, your impact on the industry will... Well, Forever sit there, 100%. It's massive, massive. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I, could, I can't, I even can't put believe... It words. Yeah, when we spoke, because I rang Mark the other day, we were both doing the ICRs, of course. <laughs> and uh, when I said, when we spoke, it was like two days later after I mentioned all of you lot on the video. And I had about six messages direct saying oh what's this guy what's his number what's his name so i passed all the instagram stuff and mark said well how many people rang you i was about 100 people almost straight away in in touch through uh, youtube it was coming from everywhere they were hitting me up on my business website saying nick bundy's giving me your details not mentioning from the video they just said nick's like phone me up and giving me your details (laughs) there was about 100 people within a couple of hours and that's continued i still i'm getting messages now saying just seeing you on nick's video um, it's crazy. I, I, need, it? I need this help. Yeah, it's mad. It's mad. I met um, Corey today, who you hooked up with. I think you say artisan. <laughs> huh? Oh, at, Syn- at Synergy. Yeah. So I work with them yeah. again today, but I work with his other team. So um, not on the smart home side, on the just the electrical side. So I met Corey, and we were talking about you, and um, he's so happy. Like, and like the guy who owns the company, Manny, he's really happy as well. Um, so yeah. He's, cool. he's That's so, nice. so dedicated as well. Um, I was talking to him today. Like he has to get he has to get up at the crack of dawn um, and get a train and a bus to meet them because they didn't. Uh, you know, there was nothing closer to home. But he's willing to do it, and he's he's really happy. And yeah, happy that you saw it helped him sort it out. So yeah, just a bit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nice. I like I like getting all the DMs that you'd actually you know, that's been through the whole experience and to hear how happy he was and settled. So, yeah, 
Thanks. I, I just think what you've done there, Mark, again, just unbelievable. It's an unbelievable resource for apprentices now um, and employers alike. I mean, you've got all the information in one place that, um, you know, it's just an incredible thing you've done, mate. And I, I, I really hope that like one of the big players in the industry come and like support you, like see if they can offer an admin or something. I, like I know that yeah. you are probably running that capacity for what you can do now. Pretty much, yeah, that's a fair fair thing to say. You know, it often goes on till like midnight, one in the morning, and they're trying to catch up with people. And I, I feel a bit bad sometimes because they're left waiting two or three days sometimes. But, you know, it's just the nature of what it is. So if there is people out there who can help with administering it as it moves forward into whatever it might become, that would be nice. There's, there's a lot of people out there willing to help. They just don't know yet. And perhaps uh, perhaps we'll, we'll make this a, a bit of a thing now. Um, moving on from that, although it's awesome and we could talk about it all night. Um, I'm bored of blowing smoke up uh, Mark's ass. Now keep going, mate. I'll carry on for a bit longer. No yeah, well and truly <laughs> deserve that. Well and truly well <laughs> um, What else is new? What's new in the world of Mark? What, what, is a, what is a technical thing you've got to... Oh, no, before we talk about that, let's talk about social media today. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had a good week. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no. <laughs> bought... Oh, oh no, in ingots. <laughs> no, but listen, okay. let's talk about social media today. You'll love this. Um, okay. So, and it and it ties in with your EICRs and, and stuff like that. Um, so, there's a couple of people on on Twitter today talking about. Um, so, obviously, Jordan from Artisan was saying that he charges three hundred eighty four pound for half a day to do an e- EICR. I think. I think Including that's what, that, that's what he said. So yeah. 320 quid plus fat. Yeah. Is that all? <laughs> and, and and then uh, someone else on there, Adrian Davey, we know him as Pure Electrical um, or Pure Electrics or whatever it is. Um, and he's a real, real nice guy. Does a lot for a lot of... Um, for a lot of uh, I've seen some of his videos on Spike Ninja's Facebook group. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't yeah they, they, seem, they seem informative. Um, and he he did actually say like, are electricians worth that much? And I I I, I think, you know, who should electricians be capped? I don't think so. I think someone like Artisan, who's got the provenance of his videos, he's obviously uh, he obviously comes correctly, comes well well prepared. You know, you kind of pay for the service you're getting. Um, and I don't think I'd, the value of electricians shouldn't be capped by one person's opinion. Opinion, yeah. If you like, the thing is, you can do do you cap it up or do you cap it down? Because equally, you've got a race to the bottom, but you've also got a race to the top, which isn't really a thing. But the thing is with Jordan, and I've tried to say this to my customers with my video, people that know me through the videos, whatever. He and me can charge more because people have seen the way we work, seen our ethic of work, everything that we do, and they can go, I want you. I know you'll do a good job. And we can go, oh, I charge you more. Not that I do, do. Like, it's not a thing around here, but Jordan can. He has the backing. He has the image. He has the name. He has the people that work for him. He has everything going for him. So why wouldn't people want to pay more for him? It's end of the day, he's an electrician. I'm an electrician. You could buy a handbag that's from Primark or a handbag that's the same thing, which has got Gucci on it, which costs you £4,000. It does the same fucking thing, but people can charge more because it's got a brand name. To the point, that's what Jordan can do, but he has a very good reputation, which leads on to everything else. So he can charge what he wants if the customer's willing to pay for it. It's then up to them for to get another quote and go, actually, I'd rather pay less. That's your choice. I think I think I absolutely agree. Um, I don't think there is a limit to what you should pay for an electrician, same as there's not a limit to, like you say, what you pay for a handbag or, you know, a, like a car. Like yeah. you can go and buy a Skoda or you can go and buy a Ferrari. It's, Gets you from A to B, doesn't it? It does the same thing, but mm. one's better than the other. It just is. But then you could pick it apart and go, Jordan could do what is a 99% EICR. I know there's not a real thing unless you do everything like we've said before, but you could just get Joe Bloggs who does a 95 pound EICR test 15% of the house badly. doesn't inspect the loft, but on that piece of paper, it says satisfactory. It's the, the level of um, 
the ICR Depend- that a person wants to pay also, for. I don't it's know. It's also a good business decision for people to, I suppose, to be associated with a brand like Artisan. Do you know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a decent brand to be associated with. Yeah. Um. My my biggest gripe is you know, people saying electricians aren't worth that money. I'd argue that's pretty like I'm not saying I could command that money. I definitely couldn't. Um. You know, I don't think many could command that money. But to say that no electrician's worth that money, I think it's a little bit, little bit naughty. Yeah. Depends. And people it depends. Can charge what they want. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. I was going to say it depends region to region as well. So, I mean, up, up here we'll have a certain um, rate that is considered the market rate for for an EICR. And down in Cambridge, in the posh part of the world where Artisan lives, it's probably a bit more. That's just the nature of, you know, the prices yeah. in general for everything. You can still buy a house up here for like 100 quid, can't you? So, I mean, it's, it's relative to the area to some extent. But at the end of the day, we spoke about this before, haven't we, Sam, um, going back? Like from when uh, Neil and Rick were on here to do with value and what you charge based on your overheads and stuff. Artisan will have a, a certain level of overheads in his business he needs yeah. to cover. And if that if that he figure will. is 380, whatever quid it is for half a day, that's his business model and it's his right to charge it. That brings me on to his rewire video. Is If you've ever not watched it, he did a rewire. And don't get me wrong, I like Jordan. He's a very clever guy and he's a very good electrician. But what gets me is his price and stuff because he did a rewire. It took him two and a half weeks to do a five bed house. I don't know how I really, I had that many comments and it was that many comments in the section saying you've got Adam Nick to do it in four days. In fact, we would have got it done. But he went through the price of it all, all this sort of stuff. He charged £11,000 plus VAT. Don't even get me started where that number come from. And he said, because it was a pain in the ass, it took so long with the manpower, he made a £1,000 profit. Because his overheads are so high, he employs what is it, five people now, an admin, a video editor. He doesn't even own his own wall chaser, which he said, people picked up on it. Like he said, he's got no place to keep it. I don't see how, because the amount of money he's charging, how has he not got what I have got? I've got a unit. Like he earns a vast amount compared to me, but I can still afford one. But he has got so much stuff he's got to pay for in the background. He has to charge that money. He has to. And yeah, I, I hate it's... to see the point if work ever dried up he would be in deep trouble with it. It's the nature of how you set your own businesses up. I mean, speaking personally, we charge about 250 quid plus of that for any ICR of a similar size to what um, Jordan was uh, alluding to. And, um, you know, speaking from a kind of letting agent point of view, we've got a customer now who was paying about 100 quid a go for his EICRs, um, but he had a, a plastic consumer unit set on fire and um, the fallout from that was that it wasn't noted at all on a, on a prior report. And they had their pants pulled down and he had to cover the cost of that towards the landlord. So now the cost of the ICRs are kind of secondary to what they maybe once were before. So people who've been down the road of paying for the race to the bottom kind of testing um, only see the value after a problem, don't they? And, you know, somebody who's charging good money like like Jordan is, we should be holding them up as a, an example as what we can all aim boy. towards doing um, if we build the industry up. Yeah, if we build the industry up together rather than knocking him because he's making too much money. I don't, I don't, it's yeah, like the logic of British people, isn't it? You see someone it's who's having jealousy. a bit of success and we, we want to chuck mud at them rather than, you know, let's I, let's let's try and support them and do the same ourselves. I agree because I I absolutely love hearing stories like that. If you can, if you what, if you can cop like seven hundred quid a day, seven hundred and fifty quid a day doing EICRs, mate, you've got it. That's a lot. Of <laughs> it would money. It, to me, it would make EICRs actually interesting. Yeah, yeah of course, I'd love to do an EICR <laughs> yes. in your house. I'll come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's that, that's that's not a bad life. The the reality yeah. is, he's got a lot of overheads, like you say, and probably you know he's probably not making much more than. He's probably doing all right, let's be fair. Yeah. But, you know, with his overheads, he's probably not making anywhere near what people are thinking he is out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But he's doing well. He's got a name for himself. He can go out there and he can he, he can he can do what he likes. Good luck good luck to him. As long as he's as long as he's providing that value that people are paying for, then there's no problem, is there? It's a, everyone people goes into a contract it. with their eyes open. If they don't go searching around for a better price, then that's on them. If they want the best or what's perceived to be the best and the most valuable, then you go to someone like that or me. Mm. It's up to you. 
I am available for me. EICRs for £750 a day, just saying, FYI. <laughs> At the company I work for um, three days a week, uh, they charge probably a similar price to you, Mark. But I know people in our area that are doing them for like 60 to £80. Pounds. Um, and I go to a lot of houses around here and I always put, oh, I put pictures, pictures on my Instagram. I don't know if it's just me. There's, there's just so much crap work in the area where I work. So last week I was on a job for two days doing remedial work from an, from an EICR. It was the, this house was supposedly tested uh, three years ago, right? When we went in, it had no earth bonding to gas and water at all. Um, it had the lighting circuits um, had no earth. Right, there was a 50 to 100 volts at every light switch. The earths weren't connected anywhere. And when we were taking lights down and stuff, the work, like the, there was like open junction boxes and just connector blocks, like connection after connection after connection. And it, under the floors upstairs, there was just connections and boxes everywhere. It was ridiculous, like absolutely ridiculous. And then this is another something different. It made me really think like I had some was talking to someone, uh, I don't know if it was last week on Instagram, he was sort of saying, um, basically uh, you're you know, you're not a real electrician. I was like, okay. Um, and I get this a lot, you haven't done an apprenticeship, you're not a real electrician. Okay, that's your... that as well. Me too. Okay. Me then, yeah. Brilliant. And, and it, it really, it really, really made me think last week, like um Am I know what electrician name. I know name? I didn't do it the traditional route. I didn't do the apprenticeship, <laughs> but I know that I'm producing better work than a lot of the work I see. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that, oh, you just do all these other courses, whatever, it's fine, you know, start apprenticeships. Because if I could do it again, I would have done my training younger and I would have done an apprenticeship, definitely. But yeah, I, I agree with that. It, um, wasn't, it wasn't an option for me at the time. But um, yeah, I just think... I, if I'm happy with the standard of work I'm producing and my work's safe and it's good and I know it's good and I'm proud of it, then that's better than some ble- whoever's done this job at this house and all this shoddy work. He, you know, he could have done it the proper route and it's not producing the work as good as mine. So it just right. really scared me when you've got people going, oh, you're not this, you're not that. I'm like... Well, then- what I will say is, are you an electrician? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, listen, get it all the time. Um, there's people out there that work in um, who have done the level three course, um, the city and gills course, whatever, or EAL level three electrical installation or electrotechnical installation, whatever you've done. Um, and that is the base qualification for someone to sort of call themselves an electrician. If you haven't got that, don't talk to me. You're not an electrician. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, um what i always say and i've done a talk last week i've done a talk last week to a college you see um and <laughs> what i did say is if you are a learner you're you should strive to get a gold card because ultimately you can go anywhere in the country on any building site and instantly get a job as an electrician and it gives you options as a learner like that should be as a learner, that is what you should be targeting is your gold card because it opens up doors for you for different types of jobs that you you might think you want to be a domestic electrician and then a bit further down the line, not enjoy that side, but enjoy doing tray and conduit and all that sort of stuff and want to go and do that. Let me cut you off. That's exactly the same conversation I had with Adam. So he when he first started, he signed up and did the first year at college as a standard three-year course like I did. And it was towards the end of the year because I missed the cutoff point to take him on as an apprentice from the start of the academic year. So we said, well, we'll, we'll wait till September. I said, I gave you the choice. I said, either do an apprenticeship or just do the three years like I did. I'll still employ you. I will actually be able to pay him more money. I know it's my choice, but if he wasn't an apprentice or was either way. And we sat him down and we talked to his dad about it quite a lot as well. It was either do the three years, be qualified as I am, do domestic what I do and what I'm teaching you or go for the apprenticeship, do the whole three years. Obviously it's more intensive. There's more exams. There's more stuff to learn. There's photos, there's diagrams. Like there's so much more involved with it. 
but you will come out the end way more qualified than me, mate. And you can literally go, <clears throat> see you later, Nick, go off to a big site, do whatever you want. And I pushed him towards the apprenticeship side, but he was more like, oh, you know, I want to just do college. Because it was just the easier life. And me and his dad were like, no, do, do it the proper way. Good. Because I never got the choice. He has no. the choice. And, and I think it's really important that people go for that because it's just the basis. It's the basics. If you I ask got me. taught nothing. Amy? Genuinely. With a three-year course, Amy did the same thing as me. Mm-hmm. I got taught nothing. No, you, you won't. Can... All off my own back. The bare yeah. minimum, like the basics. I've learned everything from people that I've worked with since since I finished college. At college, it, it was shocking. College is more about understanding the theory of the basic principles of yeah, don't lick this cable, of, it will hurt yeah. you. <laughs> not you're not necessarily there to learn how to do a fuse board, really. That's why no. you need to have that practical knowledge. And then so what you do is you go there, you you learn some of the theory, you learn some of the practical, you go away, you practice that for the week, and then you go back and then you learn something new and you go and practice that. There's basics of how a, an apprenticeship works. And ultimately, um, people don't take college seriously enough when they're doing an no. apprenticeship. And then um, some people take college too seriously and then don't do the apprenticeship properly. And they do the 12 week course. They come out, they don't know their ass from their elbow. They've got an idea because they've been in the workshop and they, but we all know the difference between putting a, a, a board up on this wall or a board up under the stairs with a million other considerations to take into account is night and day. Mm-hmm. It's true. true. It, like, the, the, the problem is when we turned up, and it's not the college's fault. The funding isn't there, and I can't stress that enough. Like, I'm not ribbing my staff at college for the stuff I learned 11 years ago. They gave us what they had, and that was it. And this is why I did a video when I first started YouTube, is trying to get loads of free fuse boards, tools, everything I can to give the staff at college and go, here you go. Because Adam was still fitting the same fuse board that I fitted 10 years ago with no screws in it, no knockout, all the knockouts out, a mix of MC breakers, like there was just crap. So that's when I gave them loads of stuff, and they were like, "Best thing ever." Start fitting RCBA boards, like they was just playing with it and showing the lads. But it's not their fault; they don't have the funding, and the teachers can only do so much what they've got. But equally, you can't go to someone, right, guys? We're going to teach you today how to rewire a house. Everyone, get your A-frame boards. <sighs> there we go. Brilliant, because yeah. it is absolutely nothing like that. But that's no. another thing where it leads into. I was lucky because my dad was in the building trade we knew electrician i got site experience straight away which led on to then getting loads of jobs to then pass through it all the lads are just half the lads just none of the family are in the trades they have no idea what to do who to approach what to say how to write a cv or to approach someone how to do that that's where mark stuff comes in really beneficial for people that we need to get site experience even if it's only a couple of weeks with a spark that is better than nothing because that'll at least teach you the principles of how to chase a wall out, how to chase a socket out, how to lift floorboards up, pull carpets, be, um, oh, I, can't, I can't even think of words today, um, be respectful of customers' houses, you know, PPE, all that sort of stuff, which you just physically can't learn from sat in no. a classroom. Yeah. No, it's impossible to learn. Because by the time a te- lecturer says that to you, you, lads are already like, oh, on their phones, and already giving a shit, like, and that's the way it was in ours. Or people, we had a guy grinding weed in the back of the classroom once. I was like, what are you doing? What's that? I was completely oblivious. I was like, what's he doing? What sweets has he got? And the uh, <laughs> lecturer was like, get out. I was like, what's, what's he done? And then they told me, I was still, what's a grinder? I said, that's that app, isn't it? No, it's not, no, it's not, Nick. Oh, <laughs> that app that you've got, Nick. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's as much as you want to rant about it, people like Mark is the way forward for the industry because there needs to be about 10 of Mark's for everyone to bunch together to help out. Yes, I, I think so. And I think um, if the industry starts realising the impact and just, it's not like a silly little project that Mark's doing in the background. It's actually reaping real tangible benefits to people within the industry. And once once um, companies start realising that, I'm, like the big players in the game, like your your way go and people like that you know I, I i can see that they would want to help mark yeah 
Why yeah, wouldn't they? It's, it's going to boost important. their brand. It's going to boost their brand. It's going to give Mark the help he needs and to further on the phone calls, the emails. I know what it's like with messages from YouTube, Instagram, bloody work. Or You cannot keep on top of it as a one-man band. For then Mark to do it to... YouTube, mine are just... No, no, mine are just messages people saying that, like the videos with a slight bit of advice or something. Mark's is about people's careers and livelihoods. It's completely different. So Mark oh, has... Uh, now I'm not, I'm not getting triggered. It's fine. It's fine. There's no there signs here. <laughs> there is a lot of people getting in touch, just like you say, who haven't had site experience at all. They've been doing apprenticeships for a couple of years now and just had no experience of working with anybody else at all. And they're kind of asking... You know, where can I go to get the chance of a, of a job, of getting a bit of experience with someone? And there is a lot of electricians who've come forward and put themselves out there as available to take those people in just for a weekend here or, or a week there. We've put, you know, probably hundreds of people together like that who have gone off and done a little bit of work somewhere just to be sure now to wire a consume unit or, or test a ring final circuit. And whilst it's not ideal, it's better than nothing. Um, but it, I think it is time the industry got real with itself about how we are training people. Yeah. And we've spoke about it on the Apprentice One to One podcast. Sam had a had a good episode where we we discussed it. Uh, yeah, and other people have come on and said similar kind of things. It's not an unknown, is it? But yeah, it's carrying on. It's still still happening. You know. I'm talking about other podcasts for a minute. Um, I want to talk about Fat Sam podcast. Um, I'm gonna just put it out there. Listen, I'm not getting enough. I'm not getting enough views for the content. Listen, if you haven't listened to Duncan Thomas. Um, you need to. saving uh, putting other people first um podcast on fat sam podcast channel on youtube or anywhere you get your podcast from you are out of your mind it is i listened to quite... it today it was gripping genuinely gripping yeah. episode you need to listen to it it is listen i'm putting out some good content for once just go and listen to it please <laughs> oh I'll tell you what, I'm going to show, I'm going to, I'm going to do a big, what do they call it, Amy? What do the kids call it now? A flex. Is it's called a flex. Well, Adam. I don't know, she ain't no kid. <laughs> oh, she, oh, yeah, you're older than me, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the, 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 most, the most spoiled apprentice, right? Okay. So that's my iPad that I use for testing on. And Adam wants to get more into it. So that's Adam's. What? Where's so mine? I got him. <laughs> he thinks I did it all for him, but this this one does only Wi-Fi, but this one's the 4G one or 5G, whatever it is. So I brought it the other day and I, I showed him yesterday. I said, yeah, mate, I got you a, got you a present. So I, it's, it's funny because it's exactly duplicated, but it means what I'm going to do for the next couple of EICRs is we're both going to fill them out, mine, proper one, and then his, just so we can pick up the the whole gist of how it is and how it reads the drop down menu to make sure afterwards we can put them together and we can just run through stuff because that's the only way I can see of teaching him it without sitting on his shoulders. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm so. so jealous of uh, that that young lad's apprenticeship. I know. <laughs> Look, yeah. Honestly, he's so lucky. He's, he's got every single high end tool you can imagine. He's been weighed right in, and now he's getting iPads. <laughs> the best <laughs> iPads. <laughs> It's not. It's not. No, I've asked him. He doesn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, nah, bitch. I don't want no, that. I want, up, man. I want that one. I want yeah. the grey one. Um, no, we we spoke about it quite in depth because I was more prepared to get it insured. I was going to get it wrapped or coloured so it sort of doesn't look white anymore. And um, first of all, there's no room for it at home on his drive like his dad's already got a van there's no room for it i said let's leave it in the unit and he was like we work together on every job i don't feel competent comfortable enough to let him go and do a complete job by himself he's in a first year level apprentice even though i know he could it's just not right yet especially in covid situations but equally we both enjoy working with each other so much and get so much done what's the point having two vans so the purpose of it is i think i'm going to do a chris and a naggy thing and i'm going to Raffle the van off, I think. People can win the van for 50 quid. And then I'll put um, a percentage of it to mental health um, um, charity as well. Nice. So I need to get it organised and sorted, but it's not the best condition van. It's had 160,000 miles on it. It's had a new engine in the past. Well, it's had a brand new engine and turbo and everything in the past um, two years. So it's, it's a good van. It's a good drive. It's just had a few knocks here and there. 
Um, but if you want to win a van for 50 quid, then it'll, I'll, I'll need to organise it and set it because it's just sat in my unit at the moment. So someone could win a perfectly working van with two van vaults in it and a Rhino tube and roof racks for £50 at some point. Nice. I, might even, I might even enter. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. It's a good van. It's a good van. Anyway, Nick, let's talk after. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, <laughs> Amy needs a new van. Have you seen the state of hers? It's red. Yeah, that's true, yeah. My van's perfect. Thank you very much. Mm. Your van perfect could fit inside of my van. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so my van's small but perfectly formed. In every way. <laughs> Definitely mm. not. Right, what is uh, Mark? What's a hot topic this week, bro? There was a few things to pick from from social media this week. I don't know if anyone's seen the stuff going off on Twitter, but there's been things to do with air frauds and hot tubs and PME air voltages and all sorts. But the one I picked out from yesterday was to do with diversity. Doesn't so exist. Gonna they're, a, they're a dancing band, aren't they? Uh, yeah, the yeah I, th- I thought they they did well, didn't they? So you know, yeah. I was going to discuss some of their moves. Uh, Sam shows about, back to. Um, what about uh, it doesn't exist though by diversity? It, no, I mean there a was very there was influential um, Twitter person. There was a suggestion that they this. don't yeah. a suggestion that they don't believe in in diversity, and I kind of get where they're coming from um, to a degree because you know you do always have that doomsday scenario in your mind, don't you? When it's Christmas and someone's got the electric shower on and someone's cooking a big Christmas dinner, and then you know they might have a an EV vehicle out on charge or something and you're worried about um, taking out your main service head or even if you've got a 15 kilowatts of heating on a 32 amp type B breaker. I mean, that was the example. So there was a, there was a 15 uh, kilowatt oven on a B32 breaker uh, as specified by the manufacturer and they were debating how that could ever work essentially. And, and the discussion kind of went along to do with diversity and how if you factor that in, it's um, perfectly fine. 15 so kilowatts. Yeah, I mean, if you look in the on-site guide, it actually tells you that you can put up 15 Six, kilowatts. 62.5 amps. Yes. Didn't use but my if you put that on, that on a, on a B32 um, breaker or a 30 amp um, a fuse wire or breaker, then you can quite happily leave it sat there thanks to the diversity and that's just the nature of how um, an oven of that type would work you know you have to think about are all of the heating elements on the hob likely to be at full whack at the same time with the grill and perhaps both the ovens that are in there is that ever a likely scenario is it even possible because you need to remember when they give these ratings on a lot of these um, products it is just the overall load of everything that's inside the appliance and it's never actually possible to put all those things on at once and this was actually yeah, spec yeah. in the manufacturer's documents that it's a 15 kilowatt um, appliance but it would be, need to be installed on a 32 amp protective device so if you stick into manufacturer's instructions that's what you've got to install whatever your feelings towards um, its rating and what you think of diversity well I've had this a lot on the videos because most of the time if I'm ever doing a, a new kitchen rewire I just fit it's a standard now, just two six mil cables, one for the oven, one for the hob. That's it. If I'm going to chase people's walls out back to the fuse board, well, why wouldn't you? To allow for future yeah. proofing in case they ever do an induction hob. And equally still, I would still wire up, even if it's a 13 amp oven, a lot of the time what I've been doing is just bypassing the, well, to be fair, from doing an oven, I normally do the isolation in a cupboard next to the oven. And then I do a hob isolation on top for vice versa sort of thing. I'll be sticking a 13 amp plug on, plugging that in, because obviously it was over 2.4 kilowatt in each its own circuit to regs, uh, putting on a plug top. And I do change it to a 20 amp in the board. People are saying to me, well, just leave, I could leave it as 32, but I like to change it to a 20 just to be safe. Um, but everyone's like, oh, you can just, using diversity, you can put the hob, halogen hob and the oven on the same one and it would work. In theory, yeah. Why the hell would we want to run that risk in case that theory doesn't work and it breaks? Like, I don't see the point. Like, why just, oh, using diversity, you can cut corners. It's there for a reason, but we're there to make houses safer, not to take the off chance that a calculation could be right. 
that was the kind of the argument that the person had put forward as well, that, you know, they're going to be the ones getting the call out when it has tripped and um, you look a bit stupid to your client, don't you? I mean, the diversity of your cooking appliances is, is your first 10 amps and then 30% of everything else afterwards. And if you've got a socket on the the um, isolator switch, you add an extra five amps in there. And you can connect a hob and an oven together on that same circuit. You, you're allowed to do it. So it's if you are designing and um, taking account of diversity in that particular uh, situation or not. I mean, the, the argument that you can expand from that is if you don't apply diversity onto a domestic property, your 23 kVA supply probably ain't going to be enough. You know, you need to be yeah. realistic. And when you, when you look at how the DNOs spec things, it's okay that they're putting a 100 amp head in your property, but the way they spec their supply cable isn't based on everyone drawing 100 amps through those um through those cables otherwise they'd have much bigger conductors coming out to every street and every house you know that there is they're, they're working on much smaller numbers than that if you actually dive into it the figures that they were from are quite small um we've, we've clamped some houses and, and done data, data logs on them and you'd be surprised at how much of a um small load most domestic premises consume yeah. you know it's not that much it's, it's just for that doomsday period where it might be an issue. And if you're the contractor who's installed it and then it trips on Christmas Day, you're not going to be very popular. And if you want to price and install your um, circuits in a way that you avoid that, then fair play to you. I've got no argument with it. So yeah. I, I, it's, it's funny. Um, the peak of the energy usage in the UK on off the grid, so the UK peak energy usage from the grid was... Um, Something like ninety seven or something, like in yeah. like the mid nineties. Because after that, everything started getting energy efficient. Do you remember like when Philips brought out them what was they? There's like a fluorescent light bulb or the twisty was, one, yeah. Yeah, the the energy saving ones. And like they take like half an hour to get fully bright, but once they they was all right once they was on. Um and then that sort of started off the revolution appliances started getting more efficient then you've got the grading of the appliances and i listened to a podcast um quite a while ago fully charged podcast it's all about evs and renewables and stuff and they had a guy on from the from the grid talking about it and he said like compared to what we used in the mid 90s compared to what we use now it's it's down by many many factors yeah you can, you can shows believe the technology, it, everyone's getting better. Yeah, and you think how many uh, solar powers, uh, solar panels are in now, wind turbines, just domestically owned private ones. Yeah. That are my neighbour just had his fitted, and he was like, "Yeah, this crap at the moment because it's winter." But he's worked; he's a very clever man. Once it gets in the full swing of things, he said, "I'll be drawing absolutely bugger all from the grid, and they'll actually be paying me." Well, I was like, not just that. If he uses a battery, he can actually store the off-peak. I know he has. Or, he's got a power wall. Oh, he's got the power wall. So yeah, yeah so, not the Tesla one, but another yeah, manufacturer one. Yeah, other brands are available. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. but what they're saying is like you can basically store the the energy in those uh, those battery packs, and then just have it as and when you need it to top up. Another yeah, another cool thing that was said about the wall because I was meant to be filming it when it was being installed but work got in the way all the batteries that are used for these power walls are actually old um, electric car batteries that are below a certain percentage as they can't be using the cars but they get recycled top back up to use as power walls so they're never being recycled so they're going to landfill i thought that was that's a cool incentive that's pretty epic yeah because the crystallization is what stops batteries from um being at their peak so these i think they're lithium batteries what happens is when you charge them, there's certain part of it, certain part of it that starts crystallizing, so you never get the full hundred percent. So over time, the more it crystallizes, I think it has like a certain point where it stops crystallizing, but then it becomes you'll only ever get like ninety seven percent, and yeah. that's no good for the car or whatever. So the the battery is ninety seven percent good, so you might as well use it on something else. So yeah, it sounds pretty awesome actually. What's going on? There's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, and definitely my favourite company leading the way, don't sponsor us, um, are My Energy. They are leading the way. They're, they're Eddie device that sort of takes power from one part, transfers it to another, you know, spreads it all out around the house. 
Um, it is just an amazing bit of kit. And, you know, they're a British-based company, all, Brit all designed and built in the UK, and they lead the way in that, really. You think this is a what it's like now? You think 10 years' time? Oh. It's going to be unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right. You lot will be a retirement age then. Well, <laughs> <laughs> 10 years' time, I'll be uh, 48. So, you know, I know. Old. I'm going to die soon. But, um, listen... Who else, before we wrap up, and I know it's the end of the show, I should have probably done this earlier, who else has started the 28-day uh, challenge? Have you really, though? I didn't eat till 2 o'clock. So oh, you're odd. <laughs> no, I forgot. To be too so busy making those... ingots. Yeah, too busy <laughs> making ingots. Um, so for those of you who don't know, myself, um, Matt Thomas and Duncan Thompson, um, we come up with a... 28 day challenge um, that anyone can do of any fitness level it just requires <sighs> mindset really you just got to, you just got to have a powerful mind to get it to see it through um, get up at five mile walk or run 10 press ups 10 burpees um, shower cold shower um, so you don't have to have the whole shower cold but you have to finish and submerge submerge yourself in the shower for and as long as you can take it in the cold shower, come out. Five seconds. That's why I lasted. <laughs> yeah, I've mastered it now. I can sit. I, I'm. I'm good. But I've got a lot of. Lot yeah, of I was. Gonna, I wasn't going to say that. So no. But I've got a lot of surface area as well. So relax. Um, <laughs> Heat dissipation. Yeah. So uh, and then you can't eat until one o'clock, and then you can only eat from then until. 8 p.m. Oh no. So you missed dinner, Biatch. <laughs> it's good for you. It's good for you. That's all you need to know. It's good for you. I, I, all I ate today was a stupid, like, rustler hot dog thing that I warmed up in my unit in the microwave. And I thought, oh, Brother Ross made the dinner. Oh. Well, you can, you can break and go and eat it and be a bitch, or you could see it through and be hard like me. Bush. Or wake up at three in the morning, raiding the fridge like my dad used to. Dad, what are you doing? Shh. We're on a diet. He's the, he, I'd see him getting slices of ham up, putting mayonnaise in it, rolling it up, and then walking back up to bed. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> Shh, don't tell your mum. <laughs> right, idiots. Um, listen, it's been a good one this week. Um, we welcome Amy back into the fold. Um, and yeah, EGTE. No, that's not us. Monday Club, we're out. <laughs> so, what's I'm doing? There we go. Oh, it's like this now, is it? I'm on the telephone upside down. Magic. <laughs>